Once again, thank you for letting me come into your home uh, on this snowy day, but it's winter and uh, we can expect that. But it comes and it too will go. But I tell you, we're getting closer and closer to spring, so we keep looking out the window, but not, not a lot of encouragement yet, but it, it will come. Boy, I'm excited to, if you read about the new series that Pastor Chris is gonna start this coming Sunday on the, on the 14th of uh, February. Uh, great series, it's gonna be really interesting. How tomorrow shapes today. We usually look at it the other way, how today will shape tomorrow. But when you're talking about prophetic events, he's gonna look at that and say, how does that change our life? What should we, sh what should we be doing? What should we be thinking? What should we be planning? And uh, I'm sure that's the direction he's going. He hasn't told me that, but it seems that uh, that's the way he'll be, he'll be going. Uh, we still uh, have our class in mind. We haven't forgotten. We're just uh, seeking to evaluate uh, week by week, and I don't think it'll be long now, and we'll be able to uh, get together. A number of you have already had uh, one injection, COVID in injection, and you're, uh, you're getting the second one, so uh, that's really great. Hey, I read something the other day that I thought was really, really interesting. It reminded me of what God's doing in different parts of the world as he's using television and radio and streaming into areas where missionaries aren't allowed to go and into uh, hard uh, areas that, uh, to reach and the gospel's getting in. And then also they now are doing training uh, via uh, the streaming and so on so that after people do come to Christ, and uh, they can't get much Bible training, but they can now they can get it via the internet, and that's uh, that's a great thing. And God's doing some wonderful things. We're part of we're part of the winning team, and uh, we're going to He's going to reach the world uh, with the gospel uh, eventually, as as we uh, all pray and give and do our part. I also read that Transworld Radio uh, have put up a 450,000 watt transmitter on the island of Bonaire. Now they've always had minis uh, radio ministry out of there, but this is the largest uh, transmitter, they said, in the Western Hemisphere. And so they're gonna be able to reach into uh, a lot of South America and Cuba and various places where the gospel will go, uh, where people who, who have who haven't heard, we're gonna have an opportunity to hear. We're living in an exciting day. I know it's been tough uh, for some of us and for some of you in particular, but uh, these are exciting days and God is doing some tremendous things. Uh, keep praying, praying for the people in our class, uh, praying for the various needs that exist and particularly remember Carol Compton and the boys, uh, Paul and Mark, at the loss of their their father and the husband and the uh, memorial service will be uh, uh, on uh, Wednesday of uh, this coming week. And so be remembering the family in prayer. There, you know, now, you, I don't know if you know it, but most of these uh, funerals are so limited, you knew that with attendance, but they are streaming them. So if you know how to uh, get get into that, you can, you can see it uh, by, by streaming. I want to take you to uh, uh, to the 138th Psalm. If you have your Bible, you may want to grab it quick, and we'll just kind of work our way through the Psalm uh, today. Uh, the human author is uh, David. Uh, the setting, not quite sure. Uh, there are some interesting things, but I'm not going to take time to share them with you. It would take all the time, or we wouldn't get into the text. Uh, but the situation is very clear because he says. In verse, um, in verse uh, seven, he says, though I walk in the midst of trouble. And so he talks about the fact that he's in trouble. He's got a problem. He's under pressure. He is uh, distressed. And uh, uh, he's in over his head uh, in whatever situation he's in. But it, nevertheless, he makes some uh, two very strong commitments. Uh, in the first two verses. And the first thing he says, in spite of the fact that I've got trouble, he said, I, I'm going to take time to thank God. And he says in verse 1, I give uh, you thanks, O Lord. I want you to know some things about that. It's very personal. He says, I'm going to do this. I don't know what the rest of you are going to do, 
But uh, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to thank God. Um, no one's making him do it. It's not just some part of a religious ritual ceremony that he's going to do it. It's an act of his own will. And he said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. That's how he's going to do it. Not with half a heart, not casually, not just out of ritual and routine, but I'm going to do it with my whole heart. And then he said this, before the gods, I sing your praise. And we're not sure who the, who the gods are to which he's referring. Could be the idols, could be the, the uh, godless uh, prophets. But nonetheless, he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give praise in front of the ungodly world so they can see my heart and my commitment to God. I thought of Psalm 40 uh, when he said that, where it says the psalmist, uh, that God took him up out of the miry clay and set his feet upon a rock and established his going and gave him a new song in his heart. And then it goes on to say, that song became a testimony to those around. So the first thing David says, I make a commitment. I'm going to give thanks. The second thing he says in verse two, I bow down toward your holy temple. He said, I'm going to worship God. And again, it's personal. He said, this is what I am going to do. It was an act of his will. It was not a religious uh, ceremony or activity. Uh, he wasn't doing it because he was embarrassed. Sometimes we get, we do things because we're embarrassed. Everybody else is bowing down. We figure, well, we better bow down too. Everybody else is kneeling. We better kneel too. But that's not the situation. Again, it's the idea. I don't know what you guys are going to do, but I'm going to bow down uh, toward the Holy Temple. I am going to worship God. And you have an outward expression of what he's already exp ex expressed to us in his heart. I'm going to give thanks with my whole heart, and you're going to see it on the outside. David couldn't change his circumstances. He said, I'm in trouble. I have a problem. And he, he couldn't change that, but he could change his attitude. He could change what was going on on the inside. And he's saying to us, I'm not going to allow my circumstance, I'm not going to allow my problem to dictate my relationship with God. And then David goes on in the psalm and he shares a number of things for which he's thankful. And I just want to look at a few of them together. We'll not look at all of them. But the first thing I notice, he says, I can thank God because I know personally his steadfast love and his faithfulness. Verse 2, he said, I bow down toward the holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. God's love never fluctuates, and David knew that, and he expresses thanks for that. God's faithfulness is uh, never in question. Uh, in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, God says to, to Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. In spite of all that Israel did in turning their backs on God, God said, I still love you and I will continue to be faithful. Listen, that ought to encourage all of us to realize that though we have failed along the way, we have disappointed God from time to time. He said, I still love you. I still love you and I will be faithful. The second thing he thanks God for is that he knows that God answers prayer. He goes on in verse 3 and says, On the day I called, you answered me. I called and you answered. Uh, it, uh, Peter in 1 Peter 3.12 says, the ears, uh, God's ears are attentive to our prayers, which means <clears throat> his ears are open. We don't have to ask him to open. We don't have to ask him to listen. He is attentive. He is, he is aware of our prayer. The moment you begin to pray, he's aware of that. Jeremiah says, God says through Jeremiah, call upon me and I will answer you, Jeremiah 33, 3. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. You call, he will save. He can do more for us than anyone else that we know. And David said, I, I just thank him so much because I know he answers my prayer. Number three, he said, I thank God because I know he strengthens me. He Verse 3 says, On the day I called, he answered me. My strength of soul had increased. He said he increased my strength inside, not just outside, but inside. Uh, I thought of the Apostle Paul, who in Second Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and elsewhere talks about 
all that he'd gone through, the shipwreck, the stoning, uh, the prison, the beatings, the misunderstandings, all of that. And yet he it concludes, though he says, outwardly I was perishing, inwardly I was renewed day by day. And that's what David is saying. I have a problem. I have, I have some trouble. But inwardly God is strengthening me. And remember Paul asked three times for God to take away that thorn and God didn't do it. But uh, he did say, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, my power is made perfect in your weakness. He said, I may, you may have an outward physical problem, but inwardly I will empower you. And um, God didn't remove the problem, but he took Paul through the problem. I, I think sometimes Paul's uh, strength was not an outward strength. What kept him going was his inward strength and God meeting his inward needs. Number four, David says, I can give thanks because I know that God cares for the lowly. He cares for the poor. Notice in verse six, for though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. God, mighty, the mighty God, the sovereign God, the all-powerful God, but he cares about the poor. He cares about you and he cares about me. And I thought about how he uh, reached down and took hold of Moses, a, a defeated, broken man on the backside of the desert, that poor Moses at that time. And God reached down and took him. And I thought of David, the shepherd boy. Uh, nobody knew who he was. His own family didn't think he uh, had much to offer, but God reached down and took him. I thought of Elisha. You read about Elisha when God uh, when the prophet Elijah found him, Elijah was out plowing. He didn't even have servants to do the plowing. He did it himself, and yet God reached down and took him. I thought of Peter, James, and John, and all those fishermen, uh, some of the poorest of the trades, and uh, God reached down and took God cares about the poor. And David said, I, I realize that, and I'm so grateful for that and thankful for that. The fifth thing, he said, I can thank God because I know he protects me. Verse seven, he says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. And notice he goes on and says, you stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand delivers me. Well, whenever you read about the right hand, that's, that's the hand of power. That's the hand of might and strength. And so in verse three, he says, you strengthen me inside. Now in this verse, he says, you also protect me on the outside. I like that Psalm 121, we've used it before, where the psalmist uh, reminds us that God watches over us and that he guards, guards us against the sun during the day and the moon at night. He said, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him, Psalm 34 and verse seven. If God is for us, Paul says, who in the world can be against us, Romans 8, 31. And so David says, I thank God for the fact that I know that he protects me. And the sixth thing, he said, I can thank God because I know he never leaves me, verse eight. He said, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. This is really interesting as I, as I read it and thought about it, and I'll get to that in just a moment, but uh, the, the fact that God will never leave us, Hebrews 13, five, those famous, verse where God said, I'll, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. In verse six, uh, he says, so that you have confidence that the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. And uh, the writer of Hebrews says, because God will never leave us, he said, I have confidence. And the confidence is that the Lord is my helper. That's all personal. He is my helper. And I, that's personal, will not fear. And uh, how, you think about how did Moses, how did Moses have the courage to come and stand before Pharaoh? Be, you know why? Because God said, I'll never, I won't leave you. I'll be with you. How did Joshua, how did he have the courage to stand up and take over the leadership when Moses died? It's because God told him, I will be with you. And that gave Joshua the confidence that he needed. Uh, I know there are times when we feel like we're, we, we've been forsaken. Uh, but we're not, not really. Uh, and sometimes we'll say, where's God? Well, I just know that he hasn't left us. See, don't ever allow emotions 
to take over the word of God. Uh, David, of David it was said in Acts 13, 36, when David served God's purpose in his own generation, then he died. And I want to tie that with this, where David said, I thank God, I know he never leaves me. And he says in verse 7, uh, uh, I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. And then he says in verse 8, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Listen, he's not going to leave. God has a purpose for you. The Bible's clear about that. And he, so he's not going to leave you. He's not giving you a purpose and then took off and left you to struggle to fulfill the purpose. One of the ways you know that he'll never leave you, never forsake you, is that he has a purpose for you in your life, and he will be there to enable you to fulfill it. One more, number seven. I can thank God, David said, because I know that God never stopped loving me. He says at the end of the verse, verse 8, Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Your steadfast love, your unfailing love, endures forever. How long is forever? It's just, it's forever. It never stops. It never stops. Jeremiah in Lamentations 3, it says, It's because of God's great love that we're not consumed. For His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And God demonstrated his love toward us. Romans 5, 8 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrated that love and he's never stopped loving us since. I love that passage in, in John chapter 13 in verse 1 as Jesus was there in the upper room with the disciples preparing for that last supper. It says, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them and he showed them his love to its full extent. And, uh, he loved them, and he showed it that night as he sat there with them, washed their feet, and uh, as it were, literally wrapped, <coughs> wrapped his arms around them as the shepherd would do to the sheep. Well, if you're like me, you're way behind in thanksgiving and expressing our thanks to God. Um, and... Uh, I know that we have troubles. I know that some of you are going through a really, really tough time, but don't get buried in the circumstances. David had a difficult thing before him, but he didn't get buried in the circumstances. He uh, didn't lose contact with God. He didn't let emotions take over his relationship with God. David said, I've got a problem. And he said, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to go on and thank God. I'm going to find some things to thank him for and I'm going to worship him. Well, my question to you, I guess, today would be, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Don't let the circumstances bury your love and your trust for God. Let me pray with you. Father, some of our people going through really diff time, tough times, really difficult, really hard. You know all about it. But don't let the emotions take over and bury the Word of God. The, the Word that they loved and the word they've studied. May it be their sustaining force today and the strength that they need to make it through another day, another week, knowing that one of these weeks will be our last one where we'll meet you face to face. Thank you for the hope you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for inviting me in, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Be a great day.